welcome to our monthly webinar. My name is Justin Cooper. I'm a hard money lender, full-time real estate investor, coach, and consultant. Each month, we bring in some of our friends in the industry to share their expertise. This may be through a presentation, like when we talk about self-directed IRAs or title insurance, or we may simply interview our expert friends and dive deep into how they got started, where their investing has taken them, and what they see coming both for themselves and for the industry. I want to say thank you to everyone who made it to tonight's event. We know you're giving up some of your time, so Jeremy and I will do everything we can to bring you the value that you're hoping for. Now, this webinar is brought to you by Pine Financial Group. Pine Financial is Colorado and Minnesota's premier hard money lender. Pine focuses on the needs of Colorado and Minnesota real estate investors. We're investors ourselves and we know what it takes to get deals closed. Everyone at Pine Financial Group is dedicated to the success of its clients. We only experience success when our clients are succeeding, so we have a habit of telling you when a deal should and should not be done. And isn't that what you want from a professional in the industry, especially someone you trust as an advisor? You will benefit from our honesty and integrity when you choose to work with us. I'm excited to introduce my friend Jeremy Lambert from Your Castle Real Estate. He's the director of recruiting at Your Castle and has been in the real estate industry for 12 years. He leads the business development team and brings new and seasoned real estate agents to the team. He's interviewed over 5,000 agents and has a great eye for talent. Jeremy, can you go ahead and tell us just a little bit more about yourself before we dive into tonight's topic? Yeah, man, I live out in uh, Denver, Colorado. I've been in, a, you know, I got a, two kiddos, two, three dogs, and a pretty extensive liquor collection. So during <laughs> uh, this whole COVID, that's uh, that's uh, helped me out quite a bit. And uh, yeah, I love real estate. I love everything about it. Love investing. Love um, learning. And so, and I love Pine Financial, man. You guys are are the best in the business. Well, I appreciate that. Thanks, man. So tonight we're talking about how to pick the right agent for our real estate investing business. And so I think maybe a good place to start uh, talking about that is just going over some statistics about real estate agents. Uh, it feels like everybody probably knows one or five different real estate agents. Um, you know, whenever somebody gets their license, they start hitting us up, um, seeing if they could, you know, help us buy or sell our house, you know, and so, um, so that's kind of some of the things we want to talk about. Do we want to be working with our cousin's sister's third brother? Uh, or should we, we find somebody else to, to be working with, especially be helping us uh, with our real estate investing? So um, since we all probably feel like we know somebody or, or 10 somebodies, uh, let's, let's talk about it. How many real estate agents are there? Man, too many, to be honest <laughs> with you, you know, like attorneys like and nail salons, you know, you just, you just packed in there. So, you know, I, I can give you some stats, man, but they're really going to focus on Denver. And so that's going to vary a little bit you know, from different markets, but because Denver is a hot market and has been for a long time. But, um, you know, I can give you some stats here and, and I think that'll paint a picture nationwide. And I, and I think the first thing you got to understand is it's really freaking easy to become a real estate agent, right? Like it's, uh, it's about, you know, four weeks of an online or in-person school. Total cost is about a thousand bucks. And next thing you know, you're a licensed agent. There, there, there's very little, little training on the front end. It's, it's really just Real estate school is kind of like an SAT prep test class for your kiddo. You know, it, it's going to teach you how to pass the test and then, you know, then you're set. So the barrier to entry is, is incredibly low. And so the failure rate is incredibly high. Right. And, yeah. and then we're running about an 87 percent failure rate of agents that get into the business and quit within the first year. That's wild. That's, That's wild. Crazy. And so is that just because they're, the training is geared towards you passing the test and not towards actually going out and getting clients and doing deals? No, man, it's it's because that it's because of all these damn flipping TV shows and and you know, sell this house and hey, look, you want to make money in real estate? Great, you know, you got to have a good personality and you got to like houses. That's bullshit. You know, <laughs> you, you got to be able to sell something. You got to you got to have a work ethic, you got to have an attitude. You know, you you got to get out there and learn and grind. It's no different yeah. than any other job. You're going to have your top producers and your low producers, but we've created this false sense of it's easy. Yeah. You know, I'm a soccer mom and I got some free time and I got 900 bucks for a real estate course. And so next thing you know, I'm going to be rich. and I'm going to be on flip this house. You know, it, it's stupid. But I mean, I bet you see I've heard a similar story very often you know, in the you investing know? world. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Think about this, man. I mean, last year in Denver, what was there? 120,000 transactions, 60,000 buy, 60,000 sell. There's 30,000, 30,000 licensed agents in our market. There's 0% chance everybody can be successful. You right. know, I mean, it, it's just, 
So people get in. I mean, I meet with on average about 40 agents a month and 10 walk in my office and within three minutes, I'm like, how can I get the hell out of here and be respectful to them? Yeah. It's crazy. And so it's is that crazy? So, so, I mean, obviously you having, you know, interviewed and chatted with so many agents, you know, you can pick up on those signs a little faster, but like, what are some of those signs to you? Just the lack of the drive, the lack of the knowledge, is it um, Dude, just the, a, the attitude isn't a fit? What, what, what's the turnoff for you? And tell you, the best thing about real estate is it, it doesn't care if you have a GA, GD or a PhD, right? It doesn't matter if you're 58 years old, you're 23 years old coming out of college. Everybody's on a late level playing field when you start, right? Because it, it really just takes work ethic, attitude, being coachable, right? And, and we can coach yeah. up any type of agent if we have those things. They're very successful people in all fields from, from a, a variety of backgrounds. But there are certain things we can look at just to make sure, you know, I mean, it's the same thing if, if I called you and I go, hey, man, I want to do a flip. I got 45 bucks. Well, I'm probably not going to be able to buy a house, right? Or, hey, yeah. I, you know, I, I, want to, I want to invest, but I just did bankruptcy. Probably not going to happen. You know, there's some certain just, just basic things that are going to work. So when I meet with an agent, what I'm looking for is, are you financially able to get into this business and withstand not making money for three to six months? You know, what's your background? Have you been successful in the past? If you're 45 years old and you've never been successful, you're probably going to keep being unsuccessful. <laughs> like the, there's a light switch that just turned off. But, you know, are you coachable? You know, I mean, can you can you um, do basic math? You know, I mean, can you work your ass off? But with our seasoned agents, I mean, if you look at the breakdown in Denver, 30,000 agents, there's 13,000 haven't done a transaction in the last 12 months. 13,000 have 10, done zero transactions. 13 of the 30 did nothing, right? There's 3,000 that have done one transaction. There's about 2,500 that have done two. So it's truly the 80-20 rule. There's 20% yeah. of the people making 80% of the money, and that's where the people you want to look for, right? The people that that, that, that are out there doing this business. So the, the numbers are just staggering. I mean, it's, har it's harder to become a barber than it is a realtor. And I definitely really? need a barber. I try to compare it. You know, it didn't. Uh, didn't work out too well. Yeah, I had my wife uh, just go to town. I just, I mean, now I don't know if you can see more or less of what I'm working with, but uh, I definitely know what it'll look, look like for me in a couple of years here. Yeah, dude, I got lots of hats, bro. <laughs> so there's 30,000 agents. Over 30% have done zero transactions in the last year. And so, and then what, another third of that probably has done what four or less transactions in the past year yeah absolutely so okay so first off i mean right there we're narrowing down the field right of who we should be working with so how how do we start finding the people who are actually being active and, and how do we start narrowing these thirty thousand down to the ten thousand i should be interviewing you know man i i think what's going to happen is you're going to run into people just in your daily life Right, like you mentioned earlier, your cousin's brother's cousin's friend, right? And, and there's kind of a litmus test on on what they're doing. And I think the best way to say is you interview them. Yeah. You know, I mean, you spend some time looking at them and you ask them basic questions like, hey, man, how long you been doing this? You know, is this your full time career? I don't want to work with someone who's part time. And the main reason is they're part time. Right? right. Like I need you. I'm paying you. You earn a commission on my transaction. I need all, I want to get my money's worth, you know? Yeah. So I also want to know, do we match up, right? Like personality wise, it, you know, I mean, if somebody came up and said, hey, Justin, I've got a deal that's so unbelievable that you're going to make so much money. It's that diamond in the rough and I'm a scumbag. You can still look at it, but that's not going to be a long-term approach to someone you build a relationship with South by any property. You know, personalities clash, man. You want to kind of like the person, you're spending time with them. You got to trust them. You know, are they bringing you good deals? Do they care? Right. But the main thing to look at is just simply production. You know, if somebody's doing production, you know, they're they're a seasoned agent, they're doing business. But I think it's tricky when you look at that because you want to see is where's that production coming from? Mm -hmm. You know, a couple of years ago, we told this story. There was a guy with a, a local real estate office in my market and he won this award in his company. And he, I saw it all over Facebook. Look at me. I'm the big producer. Right. And, um, you know, and so I went in and I pulled the numbers on how much money he actually made. So he did something like 10 million in sales, which would be about 300,000 in GCI. He only made about 80 grand. Cause he just, he was, a, he was just a discount guy. You know, oh. he was a volume. Gotcha. So you want to look at things like 
that, right? You want to look at, um, you know, where their business comes from. I could be a really high producer in real estate. I could be really polished and I could not know what a cap rate is. Yeah. Well, so, you know, so let's go back to that, that other guy you were just mentioning though. So, I mean, if he's doing the volume, right? Why, but he's only making whatever you said, $84,000. Like, why is that a bad thing? That like, how, how does that equate over to someone I don't want to work with or potentially don't want to? You know, as well as I do, man, that you got to pay for quality. Y you do, right? Y you know, I, people come to Pine because they know you fund deals, you fund the right deals, and you know it, it works. You know you're going to get support on the back end. And, and, and your value justifies your cost. It, it, there's a brokerage in my, in my hometown of Denver called Trelora Real Estate, and they're, they're a good brokerage. I don't want to talk any shit, but I'm going to. But they, um, they're all about cheap, cheap, cheap. Try getting them on the phone. Right. You have a problem. Sure. Tough shit. You're not paying for yeah. support. You're paying for cheap. You know, I mean, so, you know, it, it, it always has to justify. And I know investors. I know a lot of guys. I talk to on a regular basis like we got to squeeze every dollar out of this deal. You know, I, I see it every day. But at the same time, you pay for quality, man. You, you, yeah. you really do. You got to look at things, too. Like, is this agent a pri am I a priority for this agent? Because the guy that made 80 grand, you're not a priority you're just a deal you know he's got 15 more he needs to do to try to hit his numbers so he can get a shiny trophy at the end of the year like yeah. it's not about you it's not about maybe your investing strategy it's about volume gotcha so, yeah that's awesome so so how could we understand that so i mean if if i'm just trying to understand this agent i'm trying to get ready for an interview like do i have access to see that gci and their income and all that stuff or how can i or what, what questions should i be asking to help figure that out you know, show me your recent transactions. You know, for, for me, I have access to all this data. The consumer doesn't. But what you right. can do is Zillow does a great job of tracking the agent's production. Another thing is show me the last 10 transactions you've done. And then here's a, here's a, you can get this from Joe Massey or from you. Like, here's a quick deal analysis thing. Take those transactions and pretend like they're rentals and show me what my return would be on these. Yeah. Fill this out and email it back to me. You know, like, T tell me, tell me how you're going to make me money because you're making money, right? Agents get a commission on a deal. It's a sizable commission. They got to earn it. You're going to make money. Show me my return. Right? Yeah. And make it spell it out and test them. Test the crap out of them. We do this thing when we hire employees, especially on the admin side. We say, to, hey, are you a proficient in Excel? What do you think everybody says? Yeah, yes. of course. I love Excel. I'm great. Great. Can you do a VLOOKUP? Uh, yeah, of course. Okay, do one. Wait, what? Right. <laughs> Right now. Yeah. Oh, I mean, did I say proficient? Right? I'm sorry. Oh, it's, it's I, I not, this that. isn't my keyboard. I'm not familiar. <laughs> so what you do is you just say like, hey, look, here's a basic, um, here's some basic software that does deal analysis. Pick five properties, run it through, and send me a copy and show me. You could even ask him like, what do you feel like is an acceptable cap rate in this market? Yeah. I don't know. And all of a sudden, you're, gonna... you're you're separating, right? You're you're feeling out who actually knows what you're even talking about, right? I mean, there's yeah. probably agents out there that will say, how do you spell cap rate? I also want to know, too, like what percentage of your business comes from traditional buy and sell real estate and what percentage comes from investor? Yeah. You know? and, and, and listen, there, it's great to have a high producer feeding you deals, but it's also great to have a young, eager agent who will dedicate time to you. You know, mm -hmm. if you're willing to pull the trigger on deals, there's nothing wrong with that, that new guy, but you just got to make sure that you're a priority. You know, like, look, I've got X amount of dollars. You go bird dog the MLS all day, find me property, I'll pull the trigger. But I want to know our priority because what tends to happen is the relationship between some investors and agents is such a user. I want to use you. I'm going to get, yeah. you go do this, maybe I'll buy from you. You know, it's better to find somebody who says, hey, look, I'm committed to help you grow your portfolio in, in, in multiple ways. We got to do this together, you know, and you just feel them out. You know, track their work ethic, track how many emails you're getting, you know, track, you know, and, and ask them too. like, show me the last 20 transactions they're getting and see who they're going to. So going to meaning like if they're working with investors, are they all going to one investor or are they more <laughs> investor versus uh, retail or. I used to tell new agents to go out and, and go to the investor clubs, you know, like go to the different meetings when you guys were running your stuff back in the day, the happy hours and all those things. It's a great place to walk in as a new agent and there's a room full of people for potential clients right it's a great Absolutely. lead generation spot yeah still, you know 
John Fisher's breakfast here in Denver. There's, there's a bunch of different places you can go to, to align yourself with different investors. The problem is, do they, do the agent know what the hell they're talking about? You know, are, are you know, can I walk in there with, with five deals and say, here's a good rental, here's a good flip, here's a good VRBO, right? But the, the thing that tends to happen is, is that I build up a stable of investors. I'm going to have my favorite, right? I'm going to yeah. have the one that pays me a full commission. I'm going to have the one that's easy to work with. I'm going to have the one that has the right vendors set up. So I don't worry about funding, right? If I'm an agent and I see Pine, is my I know they're going to close. Like, I don't have to worry about it. If I see XYZ, you know, Johnny Reno, you know, hard money lender out of the trunk of his car, that's probably not going to work, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, so, you know, it's just, I, so I'm going to go down the list. And if I find this great property, I'm going to start with my number one guy. And I'm going to say, you know, hey, listen, Justin, I got a 3-2 in this part of town with this type of return. It's not on the market yet, but I want to share with you. That's what you want, right? Yeah, absolutely. I want those off-market pocket deals. I want to be the a number one priority. Absolutely. So you got to build a relationship with the agent that's going to bring you that stuff. And a lot of younger type investor agents are great for that because they don't have the sphere to do traditional business. It's just right. building up, the, building up the, the relationships. Yeah. So, I, you know, as you're talking to these investors, you can probably feel out how, first off, how new they are, right? With the young and hungry ones, that's good. But not just the young part and young being maybe young in real estate, not necessarily in their 20s or something like that. But then the hungry part, you know, you got to be able to get a feel for how hungry they are, you know, and that'll help determine how much of a priority you are. So I think Remember, that's probably, uh, yeah. Yeah, there's a guy in Denver uh, who I'm really fond of. His name's Terry Wentz. He's a great agent, great realtor. I know you know him, right? Years ago, probably 2011, he took a couple new agents under his wing. And he said, I'm going to teach you how to go bird dog deals, and then we're going to pass those on to investor clients. And this one young girl just worked her ass off, and she got eaten alive, man, because she'd find deals, and she was working with the wrong investors. She was working with somebody who went to some seminar somewhere, dropped $30,000. They have $0 to buy, but they feel like they're an accomplished investor because they put, like, whatever flip company on their shirt, and you know, but they have no cash. And so she's yeah. running all over town finding these deals she's presenting them like holy shit this is a great return you got to go they couldn't buy property and, and so they're so embarrassed they couldn't buy it you know what they'd say this isn't right this is shit right totally and it's the deal's them, fault it's not my fault yeah you're oh, finding yeah. bad deals yeah, you. it's not that i can't i don't have any money or can't do a deal the glen gary leads right like mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly no money down 40 caps you know <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Gotcha. Yeah, totally. So, um, so, so for those new agents, is there any like tips or tricks or is it really just talk to a lot of agents to kind of feel them out and, and understand their, you know, how much tenure do they have? How many years of experience? You know, maybe a lot is better. Maybe a little is better. Maybe you want two on your team. And so one of each, um, but then you got to make sure that you're feeling, um, Th that you're a priority right and so that yeah, I mean, is probably not necessarily right. a question necessarily but it's like a feel you know through those conversations so the more agents you talk to the better you'll get at, at feeling out you know the the ones that are real and being honest and that you truly will be a priority yeah you got to remember this like my my buddy's my agent uh he's one of my best friends his name's charles roberts and he uh he's every transaction i've ever done in colorado he's been a part of and uh i'm loyal to him Right. He's my friend. I love him. And uh, I would never do a deal without him, you know, even even today with everything going on. But if I as an investor, I'm not fucking loyal. <laughs> like, Bring me the deal. <laughs> I want to make money. Right. So I don't have I don't care about being in a relationship with 30 agents. If I'm looking for five rentals in the next 12 months and this is the return I want, bring them to me and I'll buy them. I'll pay you a commission. You won't have any problems. You know, it's like it's like Lon Welsh, who owns my company, is, is an incredibly seasoned investor. He'll call agents and say, here's what I want. You go find it. You you know, and if, especially if you're the listing agent, you can double end it. You can have both sides of the commission. I don't care. I just want the deal. Yeah. You know, so if I were to move into a new market, I know you're in Minnesota, right? Uh, yep. We're in Colorado. We're in Minnesota. Yep. A little bit of Wisconsin. So, like I, said, I picked up my family. I moved into Eden Prairie. I got some buddies up there. And I moved up there and I go, you know what? I need to build my portfolio out. I'm probably picking up the phone and I'm going to call probably 10 real estate companies and I'm going to get the, um, 
Yeah, and I'm going to get the the the, the receptionist on the phone, and I'm going to ask, "Hey, listen, I want your top producing um, investor agent, and I want your your rising star investor agent. Give me their numbers." The receptionist knows who people are in the office. She's yeah, going to say, sure. "Oh, you know, Billy, he's he's our your number one guy, and I'm going to interview him." And then she's going to know everybody and say, "You know, I really like Jimmy. He's new. He's aggressive." And then I'm going to screen them, dude. Yeah. And I'm just going to keep doing it until I build 10, 12 good relationships. And I'm going to say, look, I have cash or I have hard money. Here's what I want to do with that money. Go find it. Go find yeah. it for me and bring it back here. And I promise you, I will buy it and I will pay you a commission. So we go, go back to this, Justin. Yeah. When we talked about the failure rate being so low, one thing it does do is you have to watch out for it. It brings a lot of desperation. Yeah. I mean, desperate, desperate people do desperate things. They say desperate shit. They, they do desperate deals. Right. And so that's one thing to really watch out for. Yeah. That's, uh, that's really interesting that you say that because I kind of, I've always had that feeling, you know, i uh, never really been able to prove it, but you know, way back on my very first deal, um, I felt like the agent I was working with was in that situation, you know, and, um, now granted it was my first deal. I was super ignorant. So I'm not, I don't put blame on them because I didn't know what I was doing. So I couldn't vet them properly or anything, but, but yeah, I, I worked with someone who was a friend of a friend uh, and I went into their office to meet with them one day. And, you know, I had gone through the guru seminar and they had the same guru seminar book next to their desk. So I got this warm, fuzzy feeling like, Hey, we've both been through the same guru, right? We should, we should be able to knock this out of the park. Um, and, you know, Monday morning quarterback in the, the deal just, Oh my gosh. You know, the, the comps was just uh, as like a screen print of the three lines of the three comps, you know, no details, no pictures. And, and maybe I could have clicked through and done more myself. Right. But I didn't know I was hoping someone could have held my hand, you know, and they didn't. And, uh, and so looking back, maybe it was like, they just needed the paycheck, you know, maybe I was going to be their one deal this month or their one deal this quarter, their one paycheck. And so they did the bare minimum to get me across the finish line. And, and I'm not blaming anybody, you know, I, I take full responsibility for myself for not uh, doing my diligence, but 100% agree with that, that desperate uh, mentality. Yeah, you got to realize you, you as the investor, you're in the place of power, right? Like you're going to control the process, you're going to control the purchase, make them earn it. I mean, you know, even in residential real estate, the average home sale price in Denver is right around 500,000 right now. That's a $15,000 commission. I'm happy to pay it, just earn it. Right. Just, just earn it. Right. Like if yeah. I'm doing a flip on the back end, I want to see high end marketing. I want to see, I want to see beautiful shit coming out because I'm giving you fifteen thousand dollars, right? Like yeah. Earn money, right? And and a lot, and our twenty percent of agents who are successful, they're out there doing that, and they're going yeah. the extra mile, you know. And they're teaching classes and they're educating their people. But you know, you find those other ones, it's tough. You know, so ask so for, tell me more about this. Tell me more about this marketing stuff, right? Like what, what would be the high end marketing, you know, if I'm newer or if I've been, you know, trying to, you know, be mindful of my costs and, and go the cheaper route. When I'm, if I start changing my mindset and saying, okay, I'm willing to pay someone, but what should I expect for that? What is that high end marketing? What, what should I be looking for? I mean, let's just say you, you're a flipper and you, you, you busted your ass on a product and you're about to hit the market and you know, you, you're talking to an agent you say, listen, I want you to list this property, but you know, margins are really, really tight for me. So I can only give it to you for maybe you know, a flat rate of $2,000. Let's just say that because that, that's real life. That happens. Yeah. And I go, great, man. You know, I, I'm desperate. I'll do it. I still got to pay my company a fee. That's how real estate companies stay in business is they collect a portion of the agent's commission. Every real estate company in the world, all real estate agents are independent contractors. So let's just say I said, you know, um, I'll do it for two grand. I got to pay my company 20% of that. You know, I'm walking with, you know, 1500 bucks. Then I got to pay taxes on that. Right. How much am I really oh. making? So when I go to pick my photographer to take pictures, you think I'm getting the best? No, Fuck. you're walking through with your iPhone. Oh, hell yeah. I'm walking through with my <laughs> iPhone. You, you think I'm doing open houses. You think I'm marketing that product. You think I'm paying extra for real dot realtor.com. And it's okay if you're in a super, super hot buyer's market, but listen, the whole country is not in a buyer's market right now. We're in a COVID market. <laughs> Virtual showings are real. People are buying yeah. property sight unseen. And you know what? That shit ain't going to work on an iPhone. <laughs> like, you know, it, it's tough right now. People aren't leaving their house. They still got to buy property. Showings in Denver yeah. are crazy. Right now. So, you know, if, if I'm a good agent, 
And let's just say I'm making 10, 12 deals, 2,000 bucks on the deal. I'm going to really bust my ass to make sure I market that property to get top dollar. Because here's what you got to realize. If the investor makes more money on the purchase of the price of the house, guess what? I make more money in commission. Right. Like I want the investor to maximize their profit incredibly. So, so I want to maximize mine. Like we're in this together. You know, it's just, yeah. it, it's. Yeah, I think that's, that's huge, right? I mean, because we are in all in it together. The more money I make, the more money you make, vice versa. So yeah, it's worth paying a little extra if you're going to have someone negotiate harder for you, put together better marketing, 100% agree. Hey, um, one more thing, if you don't mind. Yeah. No, please. Writing a real estate offer isn't just this crap you throw on a spreadsheet and you send over. In a, in, a, in a hot market, the way you write an offer can really decide if you get the property or not. And, and, and there's an art to it. And an experienced agent knows how to do it. And they know how to write it the right way. And they know how to maximize cash. And they know how to maximize no inspection when somebody else may not. You know, when you're in a competitive situation, that experience really, really shows. And, and, and one thing when it, you're going to hear me talk about commission, commission. I'm not one of those guys that's going to sit up here and tell you that every agent should make full commission on every deal. Right. You know, if we're in a long-standing relationship, we're doing multiple deals, I'm going to ask you for a break. If I give you the buy side on a flip and the sell side on a flip, I'm going to ask you for a break. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know. It's just it's just knowing your dollar per hour and realizing cheap is cheap, bro. <laughs> like, we need to like for a reason. And that's why their burgers yeah. are three bucks, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's such a good point. Um, so, yeah, you want to pay, right? Uh, be willing to pay with the expectation of getting good value for the money you're paying. But at the same time, it's it's still worth talking about it and negotiating and, and finding that balance, right? Of how much value can I get while still trying to, you know, get a, a good deal, if you will, you know, for our real estate agent. Uh, I, I think that's huge. I mean, and it's, and it's going to be an ever evolving conversation because if you're the first time you're meeting with an agent and you're trying to work with one of these top producers, you know, you got to put up first, right? You got to show them that you're Absolutely. actually closing, you know, 10 deals a year or something like that. And maybe you have that, that uh, portfolio and you can say, here's the 10 deals I did last year, right? To entice the agent to work with you. But if you're just promising I'm going to do it because that's what the guru told you you could, that's great. You know, I'll believe it when I see it. Let's get through our first deal together. Yep, absolutely, man. There, there's a lot of, you know, another avenue that you might explore is there's a lot of investor agents in town that uh -huh. are, exceptional at finding deals in the MLS. So a, a good thing to do is look who has listings that look like flips and call the listing agent because they, they might have done that flip themselves. And right. then what you can do is say, hey, look, tell me what you look for in a flip. And they might say, I want this area of town. I want this amount of, um, of work to go in the property. And um, I don't want to scrape. I don't want to, you know, pop a top. I'm more of like lipstick type flip. Somebody like that is really good at finding what they want, but guess what? They find a lot of other stuff. It just doesn't fit their category. So you could say, hey, you know, I know you're, you're specializing in this. I'm specializing in this. You run across something. Keep me in mind, man. I'd love to work with you on a deal. There it is. Just that's, that's the script right there, right? <laughs> if you're watching this on YouTube, back this up and, and write that thing down. That's beautiful. But there's going to be a time when they actually call and this is where you got to get your ass off the pot and actually do it you know because <laughs> if they call you once they go hey justin we had that conversation and i've got this property i think it'd be perfect for you um you know we, we should go take a look at it if you go well you know i gotta do laundry or something um they're probably not going to call you again so yeah. at least go take a look right so that's that's interesting i definitely want to talk about that as well which is how to be a good client, right? Where it's not just going out there and just, how do I find the best agent? How do I beat them up on their pricing? How do I do this stuff? The other side is how am I gonna be a good client to this real estate agent? And so that's a super important uh, point. And I, and I definitely wanna come back to that as well. Um, but I think I wanna, there's a few more things I bet we can talk about on finding a good agent before we worry about <laughs> working on ourselves <laughs> to be a good yeah. agent. So- yeah, man, I'm uh, no, go ahead. I, I think one of the good things is you, you want to ask the agent, are you going to be available? You know, are you going to pick up the phone when I call? Um, you're going to want to see what kind of company they're with. And you're going to ask them, like, what kind of support do you have on the back end? 
Like what kind of support do you have, not only marketing, but also transactional support? Like our company has seven full-time managers that all they do is review documents and help guys through deals. And you know, there's some wacky stuff out there. There's cell phone towers in the middle of a listing. There's gold mines here in Colorado, you know, land deals, horse property, you know, different things. You want to make sure that if they do stumble, especially if they're newer, that they have that support to ask their, you know, answer their questions and kind of coach them through these transactions. Yeah, that's that's a huge point because I think so many people just think real estate agent goes and finds deals, right? And and yeah, they they're with XYZ company, but nobody thinks about all that back office stuff. Um and so what you're talking about there is like the managing brokers, right? The folks who are just all day every day understanding those nuances where my real estate agent is supposed to just go find the deal. But then we find a deal, turns out, yeah, there's a cell phone tower in the middle of the backyard. And so that's why it's a deal, right? That's why the numbers look good. So how do we all get comfortable with this and have it actually make sense uh, to, and worth doing? That That's a huge point, um, is actually understanding what a, a managing broker does, you know, and then maybe understanding the relationship that the agent has with the managing broker. You know, if you're doing a ton of deals, you're probably talking to this person every week, every month, a couple times a week, and, you know, they'll get better support through the deal as well. I mean, you could also do like, think about it, man. If we want to go to a restaurant, we can Google the restaurant and, and Yelp will tell us 15 reviews, a bunch of pictures of the food. We don't have that luxury in real estate. But what we can do is go to your local real estate commission website in, in Colorado. It's called Dora. And you can look up the person's license number and that'll tell you, hey, have they ever been in any sort of trouble with the law? Have they ever had any kind of reprimand from the state? You can also ask, hey, man, give me 10 of your last clients and give me the property address. You can go into pro public records and make sure that, the that, that it makes sense, that it's the right name with the right house, and give those people a call. Hey, how'd you like working with Justin? Did he return your calls, right? Did, did, he, did he feel like you were important to him? You know, how was weekends and how was maybe some after hour time where I had questions, you know? Did, did he earn his commission? And that'll tell yeah. you everything you need to know. A little yeah, bit of legwork is not yeah, absolutely. You got to do your diligence, right? If we're going to be doing all this diligence on the property, why not start before that and I should do diligence on our agent and make sure they are who they say they are. We're going to do the same thing for the property, make sure the property is what it says it is, right? So why not do that for our agents? That's a, it's such a, a great point and somewhat easy to do, right? I mean, it's to a certain extent, we can look up, you know, they're, they're buying and they're listing properties, whether they want to tell us or not. Well, I mean, I, probably if they're not willing to tell us, that might be a red flag. But uh, but yeah, and then just reach out to the person however we can, right? I mean, we know their address. <laughs> it's real estate, right? In worst case, you go and knock on the door. With a quick LinkedIn search, you can tell how long they've been in the business. Yeah, yeah. Super easy to do that diligence. And that's interesting with the Dora. You know, look them up and see if they have any violations or anything pending against them. Um, so are there like... If there were like just any violation, a red flag, or is there some like maybe we shouldn't worry as much about no, or how often does, does Dory get involved? Well, I mean, you know, a, a guy could have done something wording wrong in a contract. It's going to spell it out. It's all public information. So you're going to see it. What I'm looking for is, you know, did somebody do any fraud, anything with, mm -hmm. with you know, mishandling money? Were there any just blatant you know deception? Like, did I buy a property under the under the impression that? You know, it was it was listed as X and it came out something different. You know, are there any errors in emissions insurance claims? You know, things that that I would worry about. Do they have a criminal background? You know, you may not believe this, Justin, but you can have a criminal background and get into real estate as long as a managing broker of that company says, I'll vouch for this person. So I had a guy a couple of years ago, he came in, I said, Hey man, you ever been in trouble or anything? You're a new guy, they're gonna ask you with the state. He said, no, man, I got a clean record. Two weeks later, he calls me, he goes, hey, I need a letter from a managing broker saying you'll supervise me. And I go, well, you know, we got to dig in a little bit. He's like, I was nothing. You know, I just shot a guy and I did a home invasion. And I said, well, I'm sorry, we can't work with you, right? Like, you can't be shooting people. And, what? and this was three years ago. So it's not like it was 25 years ago. The guy, we, we declined to have him with our team. He's a licensed agent in Denver right now with a prominent firm. Think about that for a second. He, home, he broke into someone's home, shot a guy, stole all the stuff, and he's going to be real estate. <laughs> I mean, he knows his way around a piece of property, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I mean, he knows the closets really well where he duct taped the people and threw them in. You know, it's just crazy. It's real. <laughs> oh my Dude, God. I had to go and paper for it. You know, it's just, I can't make this shit up. It's real. That's wild. That's wild. 
Um, so we want we want someone who's going to be available, right? Someone who's going to help us find the deals, you know, morning, noon, and nights, you know, maybe on the weekends. But you know, what what's realistic when it comes to working with, you know, one of these top performers? You know, someone who's really going to bust their butt. Uh, you know, what what can we expect of them? What's or maybe what's asking too much? Well, there, there, there's two trains of thought, right? I, I got a really, really good agent with my company named Jackie White, and she's so dialed in. She's just really a, an amazing agent. If she calls you and she goes, hey, Justin, I found you that rental you wanted in Second Creek. It's going to be this price. We need to get on it. You as the client will know she's serious. She knows what she's doing, and she knows it's a good deal. You'll review it, and you'll make an offer right away, right? She won't give you the chance to abuse her. Right. She she's gonna say, you either buy this property or I'm calling somebody else. Yeah. The other one is the agent that they're just like a puppy. I'll do whatever you want. I want a commission. I'll do whatever you want. Agent, what I see is is a lot of investors tend to kind of abuse those guys a little bit because they're so eager, right? And they're like, uh -huh. well, go do this for me, go run some numbers over here for me, go do this for me, go show me this, and you know, be available at nine at night. You know, I like I can't walk into a target at midnight. You know why? Because they have business hours. And I accept that. I don't bitch. <laughs> Right, Jack White, my really good agent, she has business hours. My new guy, he's willing to do whatever it takes because he's hungry. So there's two trains of thought. Are they right and wrong? No, they're just different. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent agree. Um, and, and I like that. I like that analogy of, of walking into Target and the business hours. That's awesome. And so as you're interviewing, you know, these potential agents, why not ask? Right, like have these frank and honest conversations up front and be clear about that, right? Because last thing I want to do is begin all piss off that Jeremy's not returning my text messages at nine o'clock at night. But meanwhile, Jeremy's like, I shut off the phone at five and spend time with my family. But because we didn't talk about that, right? Now we're butting heads and we're getting mad at each other. It's setting the expectations, man. That's all it really totally. is. You know, totally. It's like, you know, Sundays for me, man, it's family time. I got, I got two kids that I love more than anything in the world and, and I got to spend time with them. You call me on a Sunday, it depends on who's calling. I might answer, I might not. But on my voicemail, it says, don't fucking call me on a Sunday. <laughs> well, there you, you me, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There um, <clears throat> you go. So what about working with an agent who has not, who isn't an investor or has not worked with an investor? Is that a red flag or is that something we should be open-minded about? I don't know. I mean, let, let's just say, you, let's just say you have a daughter that's engaged to a guy and he, he's a really nice guy and you like him. You kind of wish you wouldn't marry your daughter, but let's say he is. And, and he goes, hey, guess what, father-in-law, I'm getting my real estate license. I know you're an investor. I'd love to count on that business. Put you kind of in a bad spot, right? Yeah. And this shit really happens. And so I go, all right, well, you know, show me some property. And you start to realize halfway through, like, this guy really doesn't know what he's doing. I fire him. Like, it, this is about the deal and it's about the return. Right. The, the best thing is, it's, it's kind of like I have an employee working for me that's struggling right now. And he's got all these excuses. And I told him, you know, sales is very measurable. You know, you do this, you get this return. Investing is very measurable. Right. So so I, I think that, you know, I don't know if I want to let an agent practice on my portfolio. Right. Like, I, I can't afford that shit. You know, that's like saying, yeah. hey, you know, my wife wants to trade stocks. Let me dump 60 grand in an account. Just let her play with it. No, <laughs> it's the same thing with, with this. I mean, you want to help people out, maybe encourage them to go out and learn. I mean, there's so many resources out there. Pine, I mean, you guys do class after class after class, you know, let them earn it. But, you know, and if they bring you a deal to make sense, work on it. And if they bring you 20 pieces of crap, let them learn on it. But I wouldn't commit to anybody just because of uh, relationship. It's kind of like I almost bought a rental a long time ago because my, my, my cousin, my wife's cousin needed a place to live. And. I talked to my friend Lon and, and he goes, yeah, never rent a family, you know? So I, I guess I put it in, I don't think I want to work with family. Yeah. Too much, so, feeling, too much emotion. Right, exactly. So what about, uh, I think you were saying you don't, you don't commit. So what happens if, if an agent says, you know, yeah, I've got this exclusive agreement, right? And so is that just a hard no? Do I, do I continue to potentially work with them or do I just walk away from them or I mean, it's really tough, man. It's really tough because, you know, when you're in the residential sector and I and you meet a family and they say, you know, we want to use you as an agent, the exclusive right to buy is to protect the consumer and protect the agent, is to protect all the work they've done. So maybe they go out and show you 40 properties 
let's just say the then the people go to an open house to that property and the, the agent there goes, hey, I'd love to work with you. In fact, I, I'm getting buyer rebates of $2,000. That's very enticing to the consumer, right? But it's uh -huh. kind of stealing, right? So right. for that situation, a buyer agency makes perfect sense. So, you know, as an investor, you choose. You know, I, I wouldn't, I would not be loyal as an investor. I would not. I would have multiple people out searching for property for me. When you find it, I will buy it and I'll sign this exclusive right to buy for this property. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so you can do that. You can sign the exclusive for an individual property. It's not something I have to be locked in for six months. I mean, if I signed it, I might be, but like there's nothing saying I have to sign that or anything. Charles Roberts does thousands and thousands of deals. I don't think he ever signed an exclusive right to buy. Like the buddy of mine. <laughs> they are buddy of ours. You know, it's like, you know, it, but a lot of this is going to depend on where you're at in the country, man, because, um, you know, different, different uh, states are going to have different laws. So, but, I, you know, I wouldn't sign one. Gotcha. Yeah. And and so I, I mean, I meet a lot of real estate agents and a lot of them say, oh, yeah, I work with investors. But then you look at really what they're doing and most of it's retail, right? They're working with home, homeowners. And so is there how many agents out there maybe are just exclusive investors how many can balance you know well doing the two is that something we should look at and pay uh, attention to i'll just paint a picture of our company we're, we're the largest independent brokerage in colorado and we have about 650 agents and out of that 600 there's probably about 400 that are traditional buy and sell only you know traditional real estate there's probably a hundred that either personally invest or work with investor clients enough where I would categorize them that way, you know. So and and so it's a, it's a small window, but you know there's so many different types of investment. I was on, I was on a, a call with a guy named Chris Lopez today, and he does you know Chris man, and, and he does um, you know certain segments of real estate. If you were to come to him and say, hey look, I really want to find a commercial building, he'd turn you away. Yeah. Because that's not his niche. He's not experienced in that. If you were to come and say, man, I want to buy 15 VRBOs in Vail, he would turn you away. Because that's not his niche, right? And he would refer you to someone who could do that, he, you know. And so it, it's going to really depend on where you work and how you work. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. First off, one as an investor, having the clarity to know what you're really going to do. Um, I can't tell you how many investors I talk to. Like, okay, well, what's your focus? Well, it depends on the deal. Well, the deal depends on what you want to do, not right. the other way around, right? I mean, if I'm only looking for rental properties, I'm not going to suddenly entertain, you know, a scrape. You know, they're just worlds apart. Right. Um, and that's interesting that you point out, you know, that the, the good agents are focused and they know what they're good at and they know what they're not good at, you know, and so they know what they'll be able to help you with and not help you with. So that's that's an awesome thing to be pointing out. Like, first off, I as the investor need to have clarity on what what my goals are. If I'm going to be a fix and flipper, you know, a new build investor, a wholesaler, I mean, you know, landlord, whatever it is, I have to have the clarity and then I have to go find the person who also has a similar clarity and can then help me get those deals. So that's a, an awesome point right there. Um, what else, did I have something else? Oh, so with these agents who have, uh, who are investor friendly uh, um, and, and they have other investors, how can I set the tone? How do I know, you know, like Jackie White, you know, she's calling me because I said I like this deal and she's found that deal. But if I say no right now, or if I hesitate, she's calling the next one. So how do I know if I'm that first call, the fifth call, you know, how, I, how do I know I'm not gonna just get the scraps or is that just part of, you know, cutting your teeth in the industry? Dude, you just, you don't. You, it, it's all about relationship, right? I mean, it, it really, really is. Same thing with agents, they're investors. They're gonna, they're gonna work their ass off to build a relationship where you can trust them, know them, you like them, you trust them. You know, so it's just relationship building. I mean, it, it, and it all goes back, in my opinion, to just the deal. If the deal's good enough, you know, you'll buy it. You know, I mean, shit, Justin, I could call you and be like, hey, man, I found a trailer park in Wyoming that's a 40 cap. You'd buy it. <laughs> you know, like it, it, it really. <laughs> but the, the, the point is, you, you just don't know. I mean, yeah. a lot of it is don't be an asshole. Take the phone call. Be available. Take a look at the product. And when you reply on why it's not for you, don't just say this is shit. That's not going to work. You might say, hey, look, you know, I love this deal. There's so many things alike. Unfortunately, right now, X is happening. Prevent me to buy this. Or, you know, I'm just a little bit worried about the school district or I'm worried about, 
you know, the, the, the maintenance costs, or I'm worried about the taxes. That way she'll understand. She'll go, oh, that makes perfect sense. And that'll help her understand what you want in the next transaction. Yeah, totally. Exactly. We're taking that focus, right? And we're getting narrower and narrower and tighter as to what we actually want on that so that then the agent can go out and find the right deal for us, right? What we're really looking for. And so you keep mentioning this, you know, uh, and so it's a good chance to to pivot over into how can we be a good client to um, to an agent. And so you keep saying, like, you got to be able to buy the thing. So I, I, I talked to so many investors and I feel like that is something that they miss. You know, they're out there, they're hunting for deals. And maybe I, as, as a hard money lender, are one of the last people they call. And all of a sudden, they've got earnest money at risk. They've got agents who've been running around town searching for stuff. They've got buyers who are assuming, you know, or sellers, assuming that somebody's going to buy their house. And they don't have their financing lined up, right? Oh, man. So, it's, that's crazy. That, that is absolutely crazy to me. And, and we see it so much. And you and I have a mutual friend who's an incredible lender. And and uh, and you guys in hard money. I mean, it's it's amazing to me to talk to somebody and say, well, you know, hey, what are you doing? Oh yeah, you know, I'm thinking about getting this fourplex. Well, great, man. You know, what what what's the what's the, the let's drill down a little bit. How much you putting down? How much of this? Like, yeah, my uncle, he's got some extra money. He's gonna loan it to me. Wait, what? Your right. uncle? Right? Like, you know, but let, let, let's talk about this a little bit. Like That's having a vendor. Quite how that works. <laughs> is fucking huge. And you don't even know how many people I talk to that are real estate agents that will call me and say, hey, you ever heard of this lending company? Have you ever heard of this? You know, what's going on here? You know, in a market like ours where, where you're getting multiple offers on a lot of properties, that's part of the writing the good offer, right? That's part of having your, your package set up. So when you deliver it, they, they're gonna check the boxes. Okay, Pine, know them. You know, Castle and Cook, know them, right? Solid. You know, and, 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 you know, but having these, these, these crazy vendors are just nuts, man. I mean, it's yeah. just nuts. I had a guy yeah. a couple of years ago come in and he goes, you know, I'm thinking about getting my license and, and he goes, but, or maybe I'll just be a hard money lender. I go, cool. How much capital do you have? He goes, yeah, refund my house, got about $45,000. I go, you're going to be a hard money lender for like popcorn machines. <laughs> like what, what are you talking about? You know, but he was serious. He like watched the YouTube video. You see it. It's crazy. Oh, I see it all the time. You go to some of these networking events, you know, and people can uh, introduce themselves. And it feels like half the room is like, oh, I'm a private lender. I'm a hard money lender. Like, what? No, no, you're dude, you're calling me asking for loans. Dude, the, the Pine Investor Success Summit is probably one of my favorite events of the year, man. To, to go get the education I can get there and see the people I see there. But I remember once it was me and you. I don't know if you remember this. It was me, you, Charles, and I think Kevin or maybe um, Aaron Lebovic. And we're all talking. And I go, there's 400 people in the room. Right. How many, what percentage of this room has done a deal or will do a deal? You know, there's a lot of people kicking tires, man. There's a lot of people wasting time. Why do you think you drive by a car lot on a Sunday and there's people out looking at cars? They're freaking closed. It's people dreaming, right? Right. Yeah. Like, if I could just, you know, I'd love this Camaro or I'd love to get this first flip. So, you know, what you want to do as an investor to really earn the realtor's trust is show them. Here's my yeah. portfolio. Have clear cut goals and clear cut, you know, choice of this is what I want to do. My goal is this year I want to add three properties. Here's what it looks like. Here's the type of return. Here's what my financing looks like. You walk into my office and, and you talk to my top producing agent and you come at it that way. I promise you she'll dedicate time to you and she'll work her ass off because you know what she sees opportunity. Yeah. And there's no doubt. You know, it's right. like, man, this guy, this guy's got his stuff together. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so if you don't know what that means, right, call an agent. You know, call Jeremy, call myself and say, hey, what does it take to, to show someone I'm serious? You know, first off, just by making that phone call and being honest, saying, hey, I'm new and and I'm going to make this work one way or another. And I want to make sure I'm presenting myself in the right light and getting my ducks in a row. Just that first step is huge. Right. Being being a little bit humble is. is yeah, I mean, massive. You know, and don't be afraid to not know everything. Like if you're yeah. a newer guy and you're just getting into this, don't be afraid to say. Hey, you know what? We've been saving a long time. We're maybe not where we want to be in retirement, or I don't have the money to pay for my kid's college. I've got some cash. I've got some equity. I need help. And I yeah. need someone to guide me through this process. And I need to be someone I trust. So I, I need to get to know you, right? And I need to learn about you because, you know, it, it's like my financial planner. I trust that mother. You know what I mean? But I <laughs> trust me, he got it. You know, <laughs> like, yeah. It's just, but you just got to be a team. You know, you're both, you both can benefit from this transaction. 
And so, you know, team up, make sure you have a good relationship. Again, yeah. I would never work with someone I didn't like ever. Yeah, I mean, that's 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 huge, right? And so we all know what we kind of like and don't like, you know, in, in other people and personalities and, um, you know, just the vibe you're getting from someone and whether that's going to be a fit or not, because hopefully we're going to be in this industry for a while. And so hopefully we're going to work with this team member, if you want to call us all team members, right, for, for a long time. If we're doing the volume that some people want to do, you're going to be talking to these people multiple times a, a month, multiple times a week. You know, and when things get really rolling and you're under contract multiple times a day, maybe, right? And so you've got to make sure the personality is a fit. So, I mean, that's that's huge right there. Um, but if you're going to be talking to someone this much, you have to be able to answer the phone. And so if you've got a day job, then that's fine. But again, set that expectation up front. You know, I can text message at this time. I can return phone calls over my lunch hour. Uh, and I'm 100% available from 4.59 and on. Or, or whatever the expectation is, right? But set that expectation. Uh, and if it's within those times, answer the phone, right? Like, I mean, what you were saying with Jackie White calling you with a deal, if you don't answer the phone, she's picking up, she's redialing the next investor, right? Her next client that she can yeah, get this deal moved to. You, know, you nailed it, man. And also you've got to be very realistic on what the returns are in your market. Yeah. You know, it's, it's uh, you know, I, I love some of the, the, the online investor content I get to see. And it, it, there's just people out there that they're they're ridiculous. They think they're going to get the same price in Denver. They're going to, I mean, they're going to get in Manhattan, Kansas. You know, and what are you talking about? I can I can invest in El Paso for twelve thousand dollar trailers, but we're not in El Paso. You know, we're we're in Denver, and the market's different here. Learn what the re average return are, and, and a lot of the vendors can tell you, man. I mean, there's a lot of content out there. There's a lot of statistics out there with just a quick Google search you can find for free. Yeah, absolutely. And it's okay if, if Denver is not that market or if you're not finding, you don't necessarily have to compromise, right? But you just have to be realistic. And so if you're looking mm -hmm. for that for only home runs and you're going to say no to singles and doubles and triples, then that's okay. But at the same time, know that if Jeremy is a real estate agent and he's finding singles and doubles all day long, and he's got two investors who are just taking those deals every time Jeremy picks up the phone, that when he does find the home run, he's not all of a sudden gonna call you, he's probably gonna give that home run to the other investors that are doing the singles and doubles as well, right? And so just understanding that, and it's okay to, to only want the home, home run, right? Or whatever that means, but just know that it's gonna be further uh, apart doing those deals. It's going to be harder to find the agent that's going to work with you on those. So absolutely be, be realistic on the returns. Um, does not necessarily mean compromise on the returns, but just understand mm -hmm. all those other moving parts that go along with, with having potentially those high expectations. Absolutely. And you know, like you were saying, you got to be ready to pull the trigger, right? You got to have the financing lined up, have a good pre-approval letter, um, know, you know, and, and have the right team members, to, to have you pre-approved, to have walked you through the process um, and then be ready to take action, you know, right away and have the team around you who's gonna take that action with you. I mean, that, that's huge because if you want the right team members with you, we all want to close deals and we all wanna get, get things done, right? So we gotta be able to, to pull that trigger and, and do it when it comes in. You got a, you got a visitor? Sorry, my son, my son <laughs> give me a time. That's awesome. Sorry, That's awesome. Well, I mean, I think we're at a pretty good place. I mean, you know, you want to be working with the right team members. You got to be able to pull the trigger. Uh, and it's okay to have a couple conversations with someone to make sure they're going to be the right team member for you, you know, to, to interview folks, to vet them, to build that relationship. You're going to be communicating with these people a lot when you go under contract or as you're getting close to going under contract or as you're just out looking. And stuff. So, so put in the time up front and have those conversations up front to make sure once we really get rolling, those conversations are going to be flowing easily and smoothly and you're going to get the deal done. Yeah. What's the old saying, man? What? Hire slow, fire fast, right? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. That's, true. that's such a great point, right? Just because you start working with someone doesn't mean you have to stay with them. You can fire a real estate agent. You can fire a lender, you know, and find somebody else. Absolutely. Totally fine. Yeah. I love it, man. Well, I mean, we're just about here at the hour. Your family's obviously itching to uh, to get your time, and I appreciate you giving up part of your evening 
Uh, any closing thoughts, comments? How can we reach out to you if we want to get a hold of you? You know, you can catch me at Jeremy Lambert at yourcastle.com. Um, anything I can do for you, just let me know. And uh, Justin, always good to see you, brother. You know, I, awesome. we'll, have to, we'll have to catch bourbon, bourbon in a couple of weeks with some masks on or something. I love it. I love it. Well, Jeremy, really appreciate your time. Uh, obviously, if you're looking for a good real estate agent, reach out to Jeremy if you're in the Denver area uh, and maybe outside of the Denver area. Jeremy's got contacts up and down the front range in Colorado. Um, obviously, he's going to be a good resource for you. If you need some hard money, that's what Pine Financial does. We'd love to talk to you and get you pre-approved and, uh, and make sure you're teed up with the financing when you do find the right deal. Uh, and if you need some handholding uh, when it comes to buying rentals, you know, I'm happy to chat with you and see if, uh, if uh, you're a good fit to work with me and, and a little bit of coaching and consulting in that regard. But thank you everyone for joining us tonight. It's been, uh, it's been a great conversation. Jeremy, really appreciate you. And we'll catch you next month on the Pine Financial webinar. Good to see you, buddy.